Hello there guys and welcome back to another Epic and Xreal Maths video. In this video we're looking at a proof that any two consecutive integers are always co-prime with each other. So what this really means is take any two consecutive integers, they do not share any prime factors. It doesn't matter what the integers are. If they're consecutive, if, they're, if the difference between them is just the number one, then they're always going to be co-prime. We're going to prove this, but there's lots of ways to do it. We're going to prove it though today with contradiction. So the first step is going to be to make an assumption, which is the contrapositive of what we actually want to show. So the assumption is that there does exist some value such that the greatest common divisor of, let's say, two uh, integers n and n plus 1, they're clearly consecutive, is some number p, and p is a whole number. Okay, And uh, the greatest common divisor, if you haven't seen this kind of notation before, it just means the biggest number that n and n plus 1 are divisible by. We're going to assume it's p, but there's a special number that p is not allowed to be. Because, of course, if p was 1, if p was the number 1, their greatest common divisor would just be the number 1. Now, any, num any two numbers where their greatest common divisor is the number 1 are just co-prime still. They're still co-prime with each other, right? Like 5 and 7, their greatest common divisor is 1. They're co-prime. They're prime themselves, you know? Um, 7 and 10 as well, like their greatest common divisor is 1, and 10 isn't a prime number. So you can't have 1 as a greatest common divisor between two numbers. That, it means they're co-prime. So we have to specify that p is clearly not allowed to be the number 1. It can't be 1. It could be a different number. It has to be a whole number, but it just can't be the number 1. Okay, so that's really that's an important step. You'll see why in a second. Okay, so if the greatest common divisor of n and n plus 1 is p, what that means is that when you do n divided by p, you get a whole number. That's what it means. You can divide n by p and get a whole number out. I'm going to call that whole number r. Okay, so r is just a whole number. But also, n plus 1 divided by p is a whole number as well. And I'm going to call that number s. So r and s must be whole numbers because this is the definite, we're assuming that p does um, divide n and n plus 1. So r and s are integers as well. This is the great thing, though, about integers. Integers are closed under addition and subtraction, which means you cannot have one integer plus another and make a number that is not an integer. You can't have one integer subtract another and make another number that is not an integer. Okay, so what it means is we can do something very clever. We can add, or actually we can take away, r and s. So I'm going to do n plus 1 over p minus n over p. This should be an integer, okay? So I'm going to call this integer k, because why not? Okay, brilliant. And of course, they have the same denominator, so we can combine them, and we can write this as n plus 1 minus n, all divided by p, and that should be equal to some integer k. All right? And of course, we can simplify this, and n plus 1 minus n is just 1. So 1 divided by p is k. Okay. So, right. And this is the contradiction part. This is where we're about to say, oh, no, we've made a mistake. 1 divided by some whole number makes another whole number. Okay. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. Because the only number that divides... Um, one, but you know, the, the, where you can do one divided by that number to still get a whole number is the number one, and technically minus one as well. But if p was minus one, then that's not the greatest common divisor because it's a negative number. So the only, the only, it's got to be a positive number. The only positive number here that we're talking about that we that we care about is the number one. So you see that because p can't be two because that would give you a fraction. P can't be three because that would give you a fraction, because it can't be any number other than the number 1. So this statement here implies that p must be equal to the number 1. But what did we say earlier? We said, of course, that p can't be the equal to number 1. For reasons that I mentioned earlier, if two numbers have a greatest common divisor of the number 1, they're still co-prime, it's not real. So 
we get a contradiction. The only value here that works is the number 1. Therefore, the greatest common divisor of n and n plus 1 can only be 1, because n and n plus 1 are always co-prime. And that's the proof. So n and n plus 1, for any value of n that's an integer, they must always be co-prime with each other, because we've just shown the only value for p that works here is when p equals 1. And p is not allowed to equal 1. And that's it. So if you if you factorize any integer n and n plus 1, they will have completely unique prime factors. They will share none in common. That's the proof. Thank you guys so much for watching. I highly appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video.